Hey guys, this is Brian Mounts. I run TurfMechanic.com and I'm coming to you with another video today about fescue. Uh, as you see, obviously, I'm sitting here in my garden bed because I have deer that frequent our house every single night and they've started ravaging my pots of grass. So yesterday I finally had enough of it. I had enough trying to protect them outside because they do need sun. So I have to keep them outside. So I finally just decided to bring them into the garden. So here we go. Uh, all of my pots are a little bit like weird looking simply because the deer have been grabbing at them. I mean, they're throwing them around and trying to eat chunks out of them. Um, I've had a few of these pots open up and the, everything has fallen out. Uh, but the root structures are substantial enough that everything stays together. So I've decided to take this opportunity to uh, show you guys and show myself, honestly, uh, the root structures of all of these grasses. This is something that us lawn and garden enthusiasts, people who really care about our lawns, we don't get to see very often. We assume that our roots are growing deep and strong and we're feeding them and all that, but we don't see them because they're underground. When you grow stuff in pots, we have the opportunity to literally remove them from the pots and see exactly what's going on. So let's do it. It's pretty interesting. Uh, these pots, these little ones here, let me take them out. All of these little ones, that you see these are kentucky 31 tall fescues uh, they're all the exact same seed and they were all planted in tiny little pink cups uh, somewhere around the 10th of july 2020 so i'm recording this it is late um, well it's almost christmas it's the 21st of december 2020 so these things are what would that be about five and a half months old um, each one of these it's the same seed. This one was planted. I put literally one grass seed into the pot and grew it. And it grew up really great. And then about two months ago, back in October, a deer came and literally ripped the one clump of grass out of my pot and just left it for dead on the lawn. I almost threw it away, but I decided to shove it back into the pot, uh, cover it up, give it a little water, see, see if it would come back. And it did. It is literally, I mean, we're talking December and I've got, this is a clump type grass. Uh, it has split down here. So I now have two stalks coming out of one root structure that has been damaged. And both over here and over here, I've got new green growth going. Now today it's a warm day for this time of year. Uh, we're talking, it's like 43 degrees or so, uh, middle of the afternoon. Uh, but in a couple days, we're back to regular winter temperatures, like teens at night and low 30s during the day. So these aren't going to keep growing. They just aren't. Um, and it's amazing that they're growing as it is, even though it's a cold season grass. This one I'm not going to pull out because I think this one is too delicate. These, however, you can see, I don't know if you can see that. I'll put the camera up close for a little overlay here. But there are like chunks, like it's cut, almost like I took scissors and cut. The deer have eaten parts of this um, and left other parts long. Um, it is surprisingly holding up well for the weather and being outside. And as we pull this out, you know, yeah, as we pull this out, these things have been repotted already back in October when the deer tried to kill my single seed. And since then, I've had an enormous root growth down here um, on the bottom. And this is fully matted and that, I mean, this was fresh dirt two months ago. Um, so this is hard to see a little bit, but you also get some side growth. There's some roots coming out the side and these things, I mean, they look like they're growing. This, this one right here, particularly, it's like flopping off of the side, uh, looking for new dirt to grow into. In some of my previous videos about fescue grass, I have talked about the root structures of these things, how they can grow very deep. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a video about no cost lawn repair and how you can really uh, do wonders in a lawn over a season or two simply by watering well and mowing well. In the video, I talked about uh, watering deeply for the root system because grass does better when the roots grow deeper. Now, if you're watering 
every other day for 20 to 30 minutes, the water that you put on the lawn never goes below those first like inch or two. Um, but in a root structure like this, where the roots obviously want to go deeper than three inches, like obviously want to go deeper, you need to have a deeper watering session. And what I recommended in that video is that you go and figure out how much water your system is putting out and then go to an almost extreme level and water for an, an enormous amount of time, but don't do it very often. So around here, I like to water for hours, three to four hours per zone, but, only, but I only do it every once every week or so, depending on the rain. I might even go a little bit longer because it allows the top level of soil to dry out in between watering sessions, but it's enough water that water will saturate the lower levels of the soil so that these roots go down towards the water. Now, this is Kentucky 31. This one, I mean, these are Kentucky 31 also. This is also Kentucky 31. This grass has been mangled by deer, but it's also about three weeks younger than that. So it's basically the same. They're both planted in July. This is late July, this is early July. Now this one is the one that the deer literally pulled out and just rolled across the ground. So I pulled it out and I took a look at it and look at that. I've still got matting here on the bottom. So this grass right here is not quite five months old, almost five months, and I still have matting on the bottom. And if you look really closely, some of these root fibers on the bottom are actually protruding out, trying to go deeper. That's probably about six inches or so. And the roots are continuing to want to go deeper. So another even more extreme example from these is if your watering sessions don't get the ground down here wet because they're not deep enough, then the roots are never going to want to go down there. And if the roots never go down that deep, then your grass is always going to experience drought stress in times when you're not watering it or if you skip a watering session. You need to stress the plant out systematically, like in a, uh, a controlled environment, to encourage those roots to go deeper. Now, how do we do that in a lawn setting? It's easy with a pot. I mean, you could water it from the bottom of the pot um, and make that happen. But how do you do it in a lawn setting? Now, I have told uh, my viewers in a number of my videos um, that you want to do deep watering sessions because you want to saturate deep. One of the best ways to do it is to use a core aerator. Now, some people use core aerators, um, you know, regularly in the spring or the fall, and they'll just, excuse me, and they'll just do core aerating. What I suggest doing is core aerating immediately before doing an enormously deep watering session. Now, right over here, I guess I'll show an overlay so you can see it, but right over here, I've got kind of a muddy patch. Uh, this is a spot that I've never, that I haven't done enough to. I haven't attempted, I haven't seeded it, I haven't, I piled dirt on there a while ago and it brought up a bunch of weed seeds. And this little spot right here, now that we're in the winter, is just mud. Um, it's really annoying to walk across. Now, some people use these to core aerate. This takes a lot of time and manual effort because you're only punching a couple holes at a time. You're getting cores pulled out of the ground that are about maybe three and a half to four inches in the best case scenario in really tough compacted soil. You might only be pulling two cores, two, uh, two inch cores. But the point is you're, you are pulling cores out of the ground. So you're making little tubes, little straws into the ground that when you water, the water will go to those, those little tunnels and they'll go straight down below the, that two inch mark on the root system. And it will start saturating the, saturating the ground deeper than it would be otherwise. If you just put the sprinkler on, you need to have that sprinkler saturate those first two inches before it ever gets low enough to start saturating inch three and four. 
if you give them channels for that water to travel, then you're instantly going to be saturating lower. Now, of course, you're going to be getting the top layer also, but this makes it easier to get water deeper. And if you're getting water deeper, then it's likely you're getting water to places that you don't normally get water down to. And that's going to help those roots start pushing deeper. And this is a concept, this is a topic probably that deserves its own video, which I'll probably get to down the road. Something having to do with how to encourage root growth in grass. Now, for the purpose of this video, I want to just show you root systems. This right here, this is fine fescue. This is sheep's fescue. Um, I made a video about this about a month ago. Uh, it's on this channel. This has gotten mowed down, not by me with, with scissors or anything like that, but this has gotten mowed down by the deer. Um, I probably could pull it out right now, but I kind of want to let it recover a little bit from the deer damage. This pot is Chewing's Fine Fescue. So we've got Fine Fescue, Fine Fescue, Fine Fescue, and there's another Fine Fescue, four different varieties. Uh, the Fine Fescues all have, they're all very similar, uh, with the exception of the Creeping Red has more of a rhizomatic uh, spread as opposed to a bunch type. Uh, this is a Chewing's Fine Fescue. This is nowhere near as old as my Turf Type Tall Fescue or my Kentucky 31 uh, tall fescue. These were planted in September as opposed to July. So these are, what would that be, October, November? These are about three months old. Look at that. That's just beautiful. So this mat is obviously not as um, matted as the tall fescues. But we're talking from September to, to December in three, three and a half months. I still have a substantial root system in this that are going down the outsides, certainly through the middle and all the way to the bottom and fully matting on the bottom. So it doesn't take that long for the roots to go from seed. I mean, this was seeded. Uh, it doesn't take that long for the roots to start wanting to go extremely deep. Fine fescue, as I mentioned in my fine fescue versus tall fescue video. Fine fescue is a lower maintenance grass, uh, but it's better for shady areas and um, doesn't usually need quite the water because it's in shaded areas um, and for other various reasons. But this goes to show that these roots also can go very deep very quickly. If you can have a lawn setting where, where you can encourage those roots to go deep, then the plant, the grass, is going to require a lot less maintenance throughout the year. Now, fescue grass is well known for having a fungal problem, typically later in the summer, simply because people are watering it because it needs water. Now, if your root system isn't as deep as it should be, then the plant is gonna experience more drought stress in the summer, which means you're gonna to wanna to water it more frequently and that is going to cause fungal infection. Now with fescue grass, lots of people go and put down preventative fungal treatment to help prevent that. And if you don't do that and you get fungal infection, you can, get, you can put down a curative rate of fungicide to cure that up. But honestly, the best course of action is to just have a simply deep root system for your fescue grass so that you don't have to water it as much. And if you're not watering it as much, even during the heat of the summer, then the fungal problem isn't going to come about. And it should be said that there are reasons that you don't want to put a fungicide on the lawn. There are beneficial fungi in the lawn, in the soil of the lawn. And when you put these products down, you're killing off the beneficial fungus the stuff that you want in the lawn. This is the biological stuff, good stuff in the lawn that helps all of the microbial activity and it helps the fertility of your soil. It's what helps your grass grow. So if you're killing that off, you're actually doing some harm to your, your lawn. Uh, we want to avoid putting fungicide down if we can. And the best way to do that is have a deep root system. If those roots are deep, it doesn't matter how hot it gets outside. The lower portions of your soil are not going to bake under the sun because they're so deep. 
so the root system isn't going to get overheated. Any moisture that makes it six, seven inches down into your soil isn't going to evaporate away because of a hot summer day. It's just too deep in the ground. The roots that are down there are going to thrive and your grass is going to be more resistant to heat and drought all year long without the need for putting product down. Lastly, I'll pull out the turf type tall fescue. Turf type tall fescue is what most people put down in the lawn. Now there's plenty of reasons to put down fine fescues or mix fine fescues in, but people who are putting down just a pure uh, grass seed into their lawn are not usually putting down Kentucky 31 because it's better in more of a field setting as opposed to a lawn setting. Turf type tall fescue has a number of reasons why it is a superior grass type or a fescue type for a lawn. I've got a video on that which you can take a look at. Turf type tall fescue will hold its color a little bit better. It will be a little bit more heat tolerant, uh, but it still has that same deep root system. Now this one, got baked a little bit more in the summer, but it has still held up just fine and it is still slightly darker green color than my um, Kentucky 31 fescues. And it is still got a nice root, bat, uh, root mat on the bottom of this pot. One thing that this experiment has, has showed me is that these roots can go very deep very quickly and I'm curious how deep they can go. I'm kind of curious about repotting one of these into a pot that's twice as tall and then giving it a few months just to see if the roots make it to the bottom. I think that would be pretty fun and interesting to follow along. In any event, this is all fescue. All of the grass here that I have is fescue. In the garage, and I've been a little bit lazy about this uh, this fall, um, I am planting um, a couple different varieties of Kentucky uh, bluegrass and some perennial rye and a little bit later I'll be planting some warm season grasses as well uh, because it's nice to be able to compare uh, the grass types, how they grow, what colors they are, what kind of maintenance you have to do to them, how the roots look. Um, I find this all very interesting um, and it's applicable to all of us who are tending to our lawns. Um, if you found this video helpful or interesting, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to this channel. I've got lots of videos like this coming out all through the winter, spring, summer, fall, a long time to come. Let's put it like that. Um, hit that subscribe button and follow along in the journey. Um, as springtime comes around, I'm going to give you a lot of uh, extra information, little tips on how to do things in your lawn to prepare you for the rest of the season and make it look its best. Thank you very much for your time and I'll see you in the next video.